my very lowest, because I had some very dark moments, my very lowest, I think I created that. And then I was like, and I always got myself out of it. And I think I created that too. I think there's something to thoughts, you know? And that was like the little baby, like, oh, I think there's a connection here. So then I was like, let me see if I can do it on purpose. You know, like, let me see if I shift my thoughts, can I actually do things and create things on purpose? Hello, Giselle. Welcome, my love. Um, thank you for having me. This is awesome. So, Giselle Bome, this sounds so French. Are you French? Love? It does. Yeah. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> my whole name sounds French, but I'm actually Dominican. Yeah. The Dominican Republic. Yeah. My dad's part of the family had another side, but otherwise, it was all Dominican. Yes. So you are here with me today because I was scrolling TikTok and all of a sudden it's the Giselle show. It was <laughs> TikTok after TikTok. And I'm always on the For You page because I want some new spice all the time. And it was Giselle. And every time I see you talk, I go, yes, girl, absolutely. Uh -oh. And you talk about manifestation all day, yeah. every day. And you intertwine your story into this. And I love what you're saying, because I heard that voice too. I got that message too. And it's universal oh, yeah. knowledge, isn't it? Once we tap into yes. it, we all get the same message. And I know, sister, you're on the same wavelength. And I just mm -hmm. loved hearing how you talked about it. And I loved hearing how you added your story into this. And I want to bring you into my tribe to share your story with the people that follow me. Because I talk about manifestation when it comes to dating and relationships. I talk about how clarity and a calm mind, fine tuning your antenna is going to help you achieve the relationship you're looking for. Absolutely. I love that. And I love that those are the topics that you cover. Yeah. So I want to start a little bit with your story and how you came to realize that manifest manifestation could work and how you started experimenting with manifestation to seeing the results unfold. Can we start with that? Yeah. So I grew up in spirituality. My mom, I was raised in the Dominican Republic and my mom practiced voodoo. So I was always surrounded with spirits and seances and all things spirituality in ancestral African based uh, spirituality. And then through my twenties that kind of carried, but then I completely disconnected. I became way more mind and body through my thirties than I did in, than I was more spirit. So it's almost like I lost connection entirely. And then in my early forties, I started to, there was one thing I heard. I heard something about how our life is based on perception and that clicked instantly because I realized my sister's experience of our childhood, which was very traumatic, and my experience, our stories were very different at different parts, even though we were in exact same places, experiencing the same things. And I thought, wow, we are seeing the world really different, even though we were in the same place. So then that connected to then, wait a minute, and that means all of life is based on perception. So then through day, I went through a divorce and then through dating, I discovered I had patterns and some of my patterns were not healthy and I was the common denominator. So I said, I need to dive into this. What is this about me? And so I, being someone that didn't grow up in the U S therapy was a bit foreign to me. So I chose energy type healing. So I went to a hypnotherapist and an energy worker, and I just was digging into it. And, and then through that, I, it one day really connected where I thought 
my very lowest, because I had some very dark moments, my very lowest, I think I created that. And then I was like, and I always got myself out of it. And I think I created that too. I think there's something to thoughts, you know? And that was like the little baby, like, I think there's a connection here. So then I was like, let me see if I can do it on purpose. You know, like, let me see if I shift my thoughts, can I actually do things and create things on purpose? So that started some learning, right? But it was really patchy. Like it was not consistent. I didn't have all the pieces together. I just was like, I think there's something to this. And then my kids went away for three weeks with their dad on a Mediterranean vacation. And that was the longest I had been away from my kids. And there was some sadness there, of course. But then I thought, wow, this is like someone just handed me an opportunity to not parent in any way for three weeks that we're going to be out of the country and to just focus inward. And I told my friend, I said, I want to acknowledge, like, I'm, I don't want to keep searching and hearing other people, but they're not, they're either really vague or I can't, I can't grasp, you know, what they're trying to say. And, and it didn't seem relatable. It seems like I wanted to, I wanted, I just wanted straight from source. And I was definitely not hearing anybody with my background, with my level of trauma speaking on this either. So there was a lack of like relatability. So I spent three weeks, majority of the time in deep meditation. I had already been a hypnotherapist by that point. So I knew how to get myself into a similar experience that you would experience with plant medicine, but sober. And then I was just learning all these things and I would come out of meditation and I just was writing them because I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm like writing this stuff because I didn't want to forget it, you know? And I would text my friend and I'd be like, oh my God, this. And I would just text all this stuff stuff that I was learning that was blowing my mind yeah afterwards I didn't know what to do with it I literally was like there's so many big concepts right now and at the same time I had been told now that you know this you need to give it away yeah but I'm like how yeah. like no one can it doesn't serve anyone to give them concepts like what are you going to do with concepts you know I had already experienced that that's why it was patchy I couldn't do like it was concepts. I got to, I had to grab the concepts out of the sky and figure out how to integrate it. So what I did in my socials was just like live because I was completely transformed. So I was like, I'm going to live my life and I'm going to just kind of post what I call muted messages because I didn't want to be too out there. You know, I thought I would lose them if I was really out there. So they were kind of muted and I was living my life. And then I was playing with these. I literally just started testing like, okay, I have these concepts. Are they true? And I spent a year doing that until I finally received a message from the universe that said, now it's time. Now you need to just be direct and let it all out. And it's going to be okay. And that was definitely scary, you know, because, you know, you risk sounding really crazy, <laughs> but I did, I put it out there and it was very well received. I, it, because the leap of faith, right? There was an ask for a leap of faith from the universe. I've given you all of this, take the leap of faith and unfold it for me. I think this is what's going on in my mind when you say this. And I understand what you mean is when in that meditative state, when you're downloading information, that is your guidance and functionality in life as a dating and relationship coach. I've been with my husband for, I'm going to say 18 years. Cause I've been saying 17 for so long. I think I can make the jump now. I've been with for 18 years. We fought for 10 of those years. We were on the brink of divorce. Oh. And I learned how to meditate when I was in my early 20s, because I said to my mom, I read this book that you had on your table side table, which was Shirley MacLaine out on a limb. And it was her journey as an actress with, with money, somebody with money, mm -hmm. doing a spiritual journey, able to pay any guru 
that came across go anywhere. She went to Peru, saw the spaceships in the sky, sitting in a hot mm -hmm. springs at night, right? All these experiences. And for the first time, I started reading when I was four. I had a grade 11 vocabulary in grade seven. For the first mm -hmm. time, I shut a book and put it down because it just hit me so much. I needed to pause. And I yes. said that to my mom, and she sent me to a three-day retreat, and I learned how to meditate. And by the end of those three days, I went into a meditative state and brought somebody into my energy and touched their body till I could tell they were an amputee, and told my partner amputee. And all the eleven people in that room with me had different people, different diseases, and they also knew what each person had because they could touch them in their energy field in a meditative state. So I saw my power at twenty, and like you, I gave it up up in my 30s and then like yeah. he came back to it in my 40s and I went into that meditative state and the universe said thank you for letting me back in here's the information that you need when you were upset yeah. with your husband waiting to launch at him when he comes through the door I've been thinking about this all day long here's how I'm going to say it here's how I'm going to deliver this you need to change that the universe said what are you not asking forgiveness for and I went, oh, one, two, three things immediately come to mind. I'm going to give him a hug yeah. when he comes home, right? Yes. Because it's balanced out. And that's the beauty of meditation is it gives you the information you need. And the beauty of manifestation is you saying, yes, universe, I'll work with you. Yes, I love that story. And kudos to your mom. That she was that kind of mom, you know, that you had like, first you, she was reading, I, I never read the book, but she was reading that kind of book. And then when she saw you like want more, she's like, I will give you more. That is amazing. So let me ask you this, she said, what have you manifested for yourself? Can you, do you want to share that with us? Yeah. So not only have I manifested for myself, but for others too, because you can do that too. If you're very intimately connected with somebody, you know, if they just need sometimes that little like lift of like, is this possible? And you add that yes is possible and then things can happen. But I remember the biggest thing that happened first before I even started to, I mean, there were little things. I'm going to not cover like the little things, like the little testing things that I was testing out. These concepts work. Oh my gosh, they work. So then I was dating a beautiful human being. And for five years, he had been wanting to get a promotion. He needed a title for his next level up that he had a career path and he needed a particular title. He also wanted more than the title, or excuse me, more than a race. He wanted the title. And I said, well, why? You can get both. You can get the title and you can get the race to go with it. And he's like, I've been trying for five years. You know, they keep telling me, no, they don't have the budget, like all this stuff. Yeah. And so one day we were at the beach and just at the shore of the beach. And I said, why don't we ask your body? You know, like, let's ask your body if these things are possible for you. And I just needed him to like, and realize he had powers, you know? So we did, Is how do I explain it? Is the body asking where you inquire to your body? Like, can I get, can I this, can I that? And I a hundred percent had already put in my thoughts, he can get his promotion and that he can get his race, you know, like these things are possible. And so I asked him, what, can you ask your body? If you believe you can get that raise and I had already, you know, amplified that he could. So he said, yes, he believed that he could, his body said, yes. Mm -hmm. And I said, is it going to, I think the month was October, November. And I said, is it going to happen in November? And he said, no. And time is not real, but he is what he could believe, you know? So he's like, no, I he goes, is it going to happen in December? And he said, no. And I said, is it going to happen in January? And his body said, yes. And then he opened his eyes. He's like, but that's what? And I go, then trust your body. Like, trust your body. He goes, but I've been at, wanting this for five years. I go, trust your body. You know, like, trust yourself that this can happen to you. Sure enough, before, right at the cuffs of the end of December, beginning of January, he got the title he wanted. 
and he got a random raise and he was like what are you from this earth you know I'm like yes and you did that you know like you did that so then through that I'm like wow if we could do that for him why am I not doing this for myself you know so I created a work style that works beautifully for me I get to I went from barely kind of like making ends meet, you know, to living the kind of life that I wanted to live without working a full-time job. I wanted a you know part-time job and no, not a part-time job. I wanted part-time hours with full-time plus salary. And I wanted to be able to travel and to, you know, live how I wanted to live with my children and all that stuff. And that happened within three months of me. I even less than three months. It happened like started to happen the next month. And then I realized I was a powerful money manifester. Like money came, like money I could do. Money, I'm like, that I, I can do. So then that started to happen where I could go to Dominican Republic and, and live, how, do whatever I wanted while I was there. And then I went to Costa Rica and lived, did whatever I wanted. Went to New York City and like all this money just starts to show up that doesn't come out of my income. It's just like, it just shows up because money can come from anywhere. Yeah. You know, I had finally like realized it's like money is endless. It can come from anywhere. And I love being surprised by it. So then I keep, I obviously, I continuously get surprised by it. And then I also manifested my home. I wanted this particular home that I had seen in a vision that I created in a vision when I didn't have the funds to get this home. And that all appeared. That one happened within three months. Yeah. And I could go on, there's more, but like I could go on, including, you know, even love, like everything that I have believed to be true and everything in anything that I believe to be true, that I know a hundred percent is what I want and that it can be received. I will get in a very short period of time. And that to me has been the biggest, like, aha, especially my last trip to Costa Rica. That's what I learned there. I learned now go bigger. Like, okay, you've tested all this stuff out. You've tested things that you didn't think were possible for yourself. Go bigger. You know, like there is you're stop limiting. You're the only one limiting it, you know? And so like go bigger. And so now I'm playing with those concepts as well. When you ask your body a question, what is the indicator of it saying yes versus it saying no? What are we looking for? So for him in particular, this is what I did because it was just an easy method for someone who is not sure if by all of this, they're just like, I don't know if any of this stuff works, you know, this is like, here, show it to yourself that your body can communicate, that you're, you can shut down your conscious mind and connect with your subconscious through your body. Cause your subconscious knows the truth of what you really believe and don't believe, you know? <laughs> and so and then your manifestations are only limited by what you believe and don't believe, you know, like that's it. So we had to work with what we had. So what I do is I, I have them stand up and just shake any tension out, you know, like just stand up, close your eyes, take a few breaths. And then I ask, what is your yes? And their body is either going to move forward or move back. Like, it's almost like they can't control, you know, like they feel like they're going to fall forward or they're going to fall back. So you see them literally going like this. And so then, you know, okay, this is your yes, or this, your no, whichever one it is. And then you test it. You're like, is your name Mary Beth? And let's say that's the person's name. <laughs> and then you test that that's their, you know, they're going to move forward. And now you have it. Now, you know, yes or no. Now you've tapping into their subconscious. And from there, you can ask the questions. This is, okay. and that's a good I was going to say, that's a good test for those who are like, but I know I want this. Yeah. I'm like, well, let's see, do you really, you know, like does all of you really want this or is there a part that you don't want and your subconscious can answer the question? Yes. This is fascinating. You're teaching me something right now. And I love this. So I'm aligning this with people will have like a crystal at the, like a point of crystal at the end of a yep. chain and ask the question and the way the pendulum swings is the answer. So you're using yeah. the body as the energetic pendulum to gauge yes. the swing, to find the answer. So cool. Thank you for that. Yes. 
And you can, and also the pendulum is also one of my favorites too. That's another way when you want to like, when you realize I don't, I think my mind is in this too much and you want to get more like, what does my subconscious really think? Then I also like to use the little crystal. Ah, fascinating. I love how my you- kids use it. We use it with my kids use it yeah. and, and for the parents out there, <laughs> you can learn when your kid is telling the truth or not as well through it, you know, like, <laughs> so I remember doing that with and, and see how they lean. Well, my little, no, I did it with the pendulum. My little 10 year old was saying something that I knew was not true and it just, it, but I didn't care. Like it wasn't even that big a deal, you know, but he has his own too. And I'm like, let me go, let's find out, you know, if you're really telling the truth. And we did it and it came out that he was not. And he was like, okay, <laughs> fine. I'm not, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's got his own, so. <laughs> oh, that's super cute. How old is he? He's 10. Okay. Yeah. You said that, I'm sorry. That's, I <laughs> All right, so that's beginner manifestation is tapping into your subconscious and seeing what you believe. And like you said, and I say this all the time because what you believe always is. I get people coming mm -hmm. to me, I'm in a bad relationship, I can't leave. I'm single and I can't find somebody decent. And I'm like, that's why, because you're convincing yourself. Nothing will change until you first change your language because you can't change your mind till you change your language. So first change the language and then your mind can begin to follow. But yeah, just yeah. your existence. There's so much to that. You're so right with that. And I wish more people would realize how much power is in their words yes. you know like just they're saying the complete opposite of what they desire and they're stating it as such so that is exactly what's going to happen is what you are saying because that's what you believe and I take it so literally that on my socials if somebody comments something that I know they don't want but they don't realize that they're saying the words of something they don't want, I won't even like that comment. Like I'll respond to it, but I won't even heart it mm -hmm. because I'm like, if I heart it, I'm marketing as such. I'm also adding to the truth of that. I'm mm -hmm. like, I will not back that comment up. <laughs> like it's not true. Don't believe that. <laughs> I love that. So what about advanced manifestation? How do you yeah. exercise advanced manifestation? So, okay. The simple fact is that when it comes to manifestation, you really only need your thoughts. And that's absolutely the only thing. There's nothing else. But there are all of these other methods. You see them on the socials, like get water, get crystal, get, you know, paper, get, get I, I got an email of somebody doing a candle service for like a hundred dollars to help people manifest and all of these things. And whenever I see that, I'm like, but all you need is your thoughts, you know, like it, th this is it. There is nothing else. So the tools and all of these other things are only stepping stones that give you enough confidence for you to think maybe if I do those things it can be such right so that's like middle level like manifestation you're relying on things or other people to try to manifest because you need that belief you need that like you're not quite at the point where you're like I can just do this on my own when I'm thinking that's it you know <laughs> like but so you're relying on this stuff that's fine until you don't need them. At one point, my desire for everyone is to realize it's completely free, it's completely yours. You don't need anybody else, you know, and you can just own this because it's already yours. Yeah. So that to me would be high level manifestation where you are literally just using your thought power, your belief system in your thought power and your trust in what that you know is gonna happen. Yeah. And that's it. And that's it you know, like it's done. <laughs> That's to me where I want everyone to get to that point. Use all the stuff or use other people, use the tools, use, do all of that. But then at one point you own it. This is yours. Yes. How can people 
generate a belief in something that they want, but don't yet believe they deserve. Yeah. So this is where others do come in. Okay. So that this is where when you're at that level and you're like, I don't think I can get it, then yes, the teachers are going to help you. Like they're going to show you this is possible. Let me share my story. And then that makes you believe a little bit. If that person could do it, maybe if I hang around a little bit, I can do it too. And you're literally just borrowing. You're borrowing the belief system of somebody else to boost your belief system. That is what I did with my friend. He, I knew he needed a little bit of my belief system, you know, to just give him enough confidence that this could be possible. And he did it, you know? And so pe other peers, you know, people who are already doing this, just being around their vicinity or working with them in some way, like joining their little world in some way can help you. The other way would be where you are practicing what you actually believe. So mm -hmm. I do think it's frustrating to keep going against a wall where you're wanting to believe something, but it's such a reach, yeah. you know, such a reach that is, is so much easier to shift and tweak what you actually want to a point where you can believe. So maybe you're going here. So you have no confidence here that is possible. You don't know that you have all the power, you know? So then you enter somebody else's world and they give you a little bit of power, you know? And then from there, you're like, I think I can do this. And you want to get here, or I think I can do this, but you want to get here, but you don't, you don't believe it at all. No matter what the teachers are telling you, you're like, I want to believe in, I'm frustrating the crap out of myself. I'm writing all kinds of affirmations and it's not happening. And I just dip back and forth. So change it, like start here. What can you actually believe? Because you're going to get that good feeling of achieving that. And then you're going to realize, holy crap, I did that. You know, yeah. then you work here till you get here and yeah. that's okay. You know, like show it to yourself. I love that. In my mind, belief is imagination. And what you're doing is you're borrowing someone else's story to enhance your imagination of your own. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And that's, yeah, that's where like being in the vicinity, even if it's like being in their socials, you know, like I know that in my socials, people are getting that little boost. Well, I know because I'm also getting the emails, you know, so like I get the emails that tell me because of what you said, I tried this and I'm like, good, I can be a little stepping stool for you you know and then from there you can gain your confidence that you know how to do this until you just grab it and you're like oh this was always mine i'm like yeah it was you know <laughs> then you just start using it and i think people sometimes find it hard to believe because they're actually actively ignoring what they already have and it's hard to reach this level when you're ignoring what you've already achieved. It's hard for me to believe yes. I can be rich when I'm ignoring the money I already have. Yeah. So it's, it's sometimes what we need to do is kind of take a step back and examine our lives and see where the evidence already lays yes. and, and acknowledge that and feel gratitude for that because manifestation is very emotional, isn't it? Yeah. I love how you said that. And that is so true. If A, yes, is based on the emotion. And then B is when in doubt, realize A, you've been manifesting the whole time, you know, even to the point where you are now, you know, like you did that, that did not just happen. And so looking back and go, but if I, but I did do it, even I at times have to, you know, as I'm reaching bigger, I have to remind myself of the things I already did that when I did it, I thought, wow, I'm really testing this out. This seems seemingly impossible, but I really think it could happen. You know, so that I have to remind myself, you did what would seemingly seemed impossible to you. You did that. Yeah. So that's such a good point. I love that. I think sometimes what happens, what gets in our way is the dynamic 
difference between the physical body, that human body designed to survive on this planet with its instincts and drives, and the manifesting mind, which is untethered to anything and has any possibility in existence and beyond. So the human body is designed to survive on this planet. One of our survival designs is a negative brain, a brain that holds on to negativities and releases positivities as something that as it's not necessary for my survival instinct. I don't need to remember how beautiful that rainbow was, but I need to remember where the food sources are, where the predators are, what hurt me when I picked it up, what hurt me when I ate it, where the predator, where well, I said the predators, but I need to remember those mm -hmm. negatives, repeat them and die. And we have to restructure our own human brain into a more spiritual brain in order to elevate ourselves above the physical body. So the biological body designed to procreate, the logical mind designed to assess, the spiritual connections that happen when you think about somebody that you care for and a minute later you get a text message or a phone call showing that you don't have to be in the same room in order to communicate. And so understanding that the biological body has certain designs that we need to overcome come in order to ascend into a place where we can create more than just what the physical body needs. I think we need to kind of, what, I like to say that the more we understand ourselves, the more we can evolve and grow and do better. Yeah. Yeah. And everything you said, I love how you describe it. It's beautiful. Yeah. But it's true, it's the negativity bias is real. You know, we're going to choose, it's, e it's way easier for the human mind to focus on the negativity bias. And then it's just shifting that. We have the ability to literally change out of that and shift our thoughts. I always say, wait, everything you describe is what I say, master your mind with your spirit. You know, because when you do that, then you really become powerful. Yeah. I have a personal question for you, Giselle. Mm -hmm. A personal for me. So I'm unsure what to manifest because I'm in a, I'm in a great location with my husband. I, I manifested this property because I wanted to live in a place that had enough land to grow food that had a shop mm -hmm. for my husband and a house for me on the same property. My husband works 80 to hundred hours a week. I love being able to pop in and grab a kiss when I want to. Yeah. <clears throat> and so we are here where I want to be. We are safe and sound in our lives. We are unbothered. And I'm finding it difficult to figure out what I want to manifest because I want to change the world, but that comes with a certain level of fame. A certain level of fame comes with a certain level of unsafe people. And I don't want to yeah. bring anything unsafe into the safe environment that we have. And so I'm having yeah. difficulty I don't know what to do. What would you yeah. do in this situation? There are two things in okay. what you just said. Okay. One is I instantly wondered, how does your husband feel about working on 80 to 100 hours a week? It's his decision. And, okay, so he's happy with that. Yes. Because if he wasn't, I'm like, well, there's one thing you can manifest. His ability to make the same or more not working 80 to 100 hours a week. Unless he's feels that that's something he wants to do. He's, the second thing, oh, good. Yeah. The second thing is you can have, okay, so you can definitely have a louder voice, meaning like you're reaching more people and not have the negativity. So this was actually one of my fears when I didn't want to cross over the fire of vulnerability of putting my story out there. I a, am very private. Even when we got on camera, I was like, okay, can't see the pictures of my kids in the back. You know, like I'm very private. I want to like protect their identity and like all of that stuff. And I'm private about my life. You know, like I'm the, some people will ask, well, how you need to give us more details on where it all come from. And I'm like, I'm giving you the details that I'm comfortable sharing. And it's already a lot, you know, like I'm sharing a lot about my life. And I didn't want, I was afraid of the negativity, the, what you just said, like the unsafety of it, but I did it anyway. Right. And then I just said, I just need to focus on the people that will receive the message. Okay. Within the first week, I got a racist comment, which I deleted and blocked the person. 
It was actually, it was racist while also being hilarious, okay? I actually laughed really hard at the comment because he said, be quiet, Black Annie. And in my life, I'm growing up. <laughs> I'm going to start laughing all over again because I'm growing out my hair. So I 100% know that yes. that Annie part is true. I laughed for hours. I'm going somewhere with this too. I laughed for hours. I sent it to my daughter because I'm like, oh my God, he hit on my hair. You know, the nerdy part of me. And anyway, so there was that, right? I blocked the person. The next day or even a few hours later, I started to get these insanely crazy emails from this person, which I'm pretty sure was the same person. But they were threatening me. They were like, we're gonna, I'm going to find everything about you. I'm going to like, he just, whoever that was, he, she, they, I don't know the gender. So I'm going to just use he, but like, they were going hard on my email. I was getting emails every 15, 20 minutes from this person with all the threats, you know? And, and right away I thought, did I hurt the person? Did me blocking them somehow trigger something? Were they someone who felt rejected? And here I did block them and they felt even more rejected. So there's a lot of empathy, you know, of like, could I have done that differently? Could I, you know, not have triggered someone in one way? And then the second thing was, I said to myself, you are leaving my reality by the end of the night. You know, like you, I reject you from this reality. And you're going to go with peace. You're going to not find this interesting for you anymore. <laughs> you know, like this isn't going to have the same feeling for you. And you're leaving my reality. And meanwhile, he's sending all these threatening messages about what he's going to do, you know, to me. And by the end of the night, they were gone. And then I've never received another one ever since, you know. And so I realized, okay, then I can do that for all other messages. Like people... Yes, I'm okay. There's a threshold. I'm okay with certain negative messages. That's it's unfortunate because a lot of that is stating their own reality as facts, you know, but I'm okay with it. But there's a threshold of where I'm not okay. And so what I did was just create a reality where that just never gets above that threshold. I I think that makes complete sense. I think that makes complete sense. I think it's a it's just a fear. And I need to not give in to the fear and I need to simply manifest the safety alongside everything else that I'm yes. creating in harmony. Yeah. So by, by actually you, you want to be able to reach a larger audience. You don't want the possible unsafety that can come with that. So creating in harmony is adding the safety component. You know, it's like, okay, then I'm going to make this harmonious. I don't want the say, I don't want the unsafety. So therefore I can have the voice that speaks to a larger group and I will be protected in doing that. And that just comes along with it. It's like, all right, we're coming along. <laughs> I love that. Giselle, do you have any questions for me? So I love the work you're doing because I think there, there is relationships is not my, it's not the topic that I'm like, let me talk a lot about it. And my topic is more in how can you feel that you can just like own this crap, like just own it, you know, and that is yours. But I got asked on relationships. So I was like, All right, I'm going to do a little four part series and then I want to be done. You know, like I don't, this is not where I want to go with it. So I just did a little series with it. But the amount, I'd love for you to, even just for anybody listening to this, what I saw and what I did this to, and what I saw from comments is wanting a relationship or wanting a particular person in scarcity, you know, like there was such a scarcity mindset about it of like, can I just get this much? Can I call, can I get this person who's blocked me, who doesn't want me in their lives? to call me back, you know? And it is like, I get that there's that desire, but do you also have the belief that either this person or another person can not just call you back, but like be everything 
that you're wanting to create in a relationship. Can you imagine that? You know, and then, oh, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and then the other thing is I worry about, or I always am like, man, I wish you could shift that mindset when people are stuck on, it has to be a particular person and that somehow this particular person is the only person that could possibly give them what they want. And to me, that's also based on a scarcity mindset, you know? So like, how do you work with that with your people? I love this question. <laughs> You're like, I could talk about this all day. <laughs> I got the answer. Okay. So step one, step one. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this in a two part answer. One is changing your mindset and one is actual manifestation and how you would exercise that. So step one is acknowledging that there are plenty out there. And the analogy that I use, Giselle, have you ever acquired a certain make a model of car? Yes. When you got that car, did you suddenly start seeing it everywhere? Yes. Yes, because just, I just have a TikTok on this, by the way. <laughs> familiarity, familiarity creates recognition. So the first thing you need to acknowledge is that when you become familiar with what a good, no more assholes, what a good man is, when you become familiar with the concept, with the image, with the idea of who they are in terms of character and personality and integrity and how they operate, when you become familiar with that, you are then more capable of finding them because you're familiar and the recognition will happen more easily. Now, how do you find them? First of all, it happens in the conversations. They're not wearing labels. So that's why you use a no kissing for three months dating when you don't occupy their mouths with your kisses so that you can find out who they are and look for consistency or inconsistencies, which is how you'll know they're not what you're looking for. But when it comes to the manifestation aspect of it, this, listen, I manifested, I've manifested relationships for other people. And so this is what I do. And this is what I teach people to do. You go into your meditative state, you imagine yourself with the person you want to be with hip to hip arms around each other's waist. So you come up with the body, but not the face. You don't see the face because the face will be filled in, but you come up with the body beside you. You put a smile on your face the thought is there's nothing to complain about. The emotion is gratitude and happiness. I have everything I want. And as an extra touch, Giselle, I pour money on that image, money floating, mm -hmm. raining from the sky, because listen, why not add that? I have nothing yes. to complain about. I have everything I want and need and you do this when you're meditating you do this when you're driving you do this when your mind is just flipping through inconsequential things singing a tiktok song wait a second let me be more productive with my thoughts right now let me imagine what it is that I want go into that state of gratitude and happiness and rain a little bit of money on us too so that we can buy anything we want go anywhere we want oh I love that is that abundance. And I love that you don't have them fill in the face because it's like, I want people so much to believe you can get everything you want. You really can't, like there isn't any limit. And someone said so perfectly, they said, you know, when someone is manifesting with scarcity, where they're limiting themselves in that relationship or what they can get, they literally just go from reality A to reality 8.1. And, you know, and I'm like, if you can open that and realize that, that what you're seeking is that experience, not necessarily that specific person, that experience, you know, and then I love that you add even more to it, that you can receive that. And there is truth to when somebody cannot hold that, sustain that themselves, that you can do that for somebody else, you know, like you, they're borrowing, they're just borrowing a little bit of what you have, you know, for them to be able to realize I can. Yeah. I love that you do that. You know, my, my favorite thing that I hear with what it is that I do is when women come to me and they say, you give me hope. Yeah. Because hope is that little thing that happens before imagination. 
Yes. If hope it exists, I can start imagining it exists and then I can start bringing it in. Yes. I love hope is so powerful. When someone's like, I hope I have hope that it's going to work out. I'm like, that's more powerful than you realize, you know, like hope is very powerful. Hope and believe in knowing. Any final words of wisdom for us, Giselle? I would say, stay curious. That's what I would say. Stay curious and keep seeking. You're going to find everything that you're looking for. You're going to find. Curiosity is a sign of intelligence. I think the universe loves intelligence. Yeah. Yes, I agree. I agree. I appreciate you. I'm so happy you agreed to do this because oh, it's thank you. We need to thank share. you for like reaching out. Yes, because we need to share. We need to get this out because we need to change the world, and that will happen through collective consciousness. Yes, that ripple effect. And thank you for the work that you're doing. I love your story. I think it's amazing and much needed work. I would say the exact same back to you, my love. Thank you. Thank you. This was so cool. Thank you. Anytime. Anytime. Oh. And listen, if there's something you want to come and share on my platform, reach out. Say, hey, Chantal, i got some great stuff. I want to come tell your people about it. Can we do a podcast? I'm going to say absolutely yes. Oh, thank you. And I'm excited for you as you like tweak your manifestation to reach an even greater platform without, you know, with the safety along. Yes. I'm going to marry them. I'm not going to say yes. anymore. I'm going to marry them together. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. I appreciate you. Bye, lovely. Bye-bye. Oh, wait, Giselle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where can people find you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Um, <laughs> so into the, and like we're ground level people, all these marketing stuff. We I don't do know. this from passion. It's like I you're know. like, yeah, you're like, oh, wait. <laughs> so the two socials that I'm most active on is Instagram and TikTok. I have two different sets of messages on them. On Instagram, I talk more of that human experience and connect in particularly to the people that have experienced trauma or deep darkness. And so that's Giselle Bome. And then on TikTok is where I'm like, and here's the how, you know, and I literally, my goal is literally to just give everything away. And that is also Giselle Bome. And then my website is GiselleBome.com. So they can find me there. And that's B-A-U-M-E-T. Yes. Yeah. Love this. Thank you, Giselle. I appreciate you so much. All righty. Bye. Bye, my love.